So, in last week's video, I failed to get a photograph. I did try, well, no, I probably didn't try hard enough, but I just wasn't feeling it. There was no light, we were very late. It happens sometimes. That's the thing with photography. Nothing is ever guaranteed, uh, not with landscapes anyway. But that's not to say the trip wasn't a great success. So in this video, I actually wanna share with you some of my experiences from the week, some good, some not so good. Um, but before we go into this video, when I was there on this out of Moab uh, photography conference, I met this guy. This guy is Raphael, and he is the, the creator of Photo Pills, which is a, an app that a lot of landscape photographers use. And they're running a camp, like a Photo Pills camp, which is a week long landscape photography, I don't know, adventure. And it's on Menorca, not Mallorca. Menorca, uh, it's different, a small island in the Mediterranean. And when I was there chatting to Raphael in, the, in Utah, he invited me along to go and be like a, one of the, I don't know, one of the leaders, one of the adventurers, one of the guest photographers. So I thought I'd give that a plug. I'm gonna stick a link in the description. If you're interested in an adventurous week on the island of Menorca in the Mediterranean Sea in May next year, Take a look at the link, it's uh, Photo Pills Camp. Very, very excited to be doing that. Now, let's start with my week in Arches National, not just Arches, Arches and Canyonlands National Park. Um, I The way it works is it's a landscape photography conference and there are a number of photography leaders. So lots of photographers from all around the world, I was one of them. And the idea is it's a conference where we do presentations and critiques and that kind of usual conferency stuff. But as well as that, we take groups out on excursions. I wouldn't say it was a workshop because you don't have enough time to get to know people and to get the group. You literally go out with new people every day and you spend an hour or two on location. And when I got my schedule, I noticed that one of the locations was Mesa or Mesa Arch. Um, and, and I was like, oh no. I was so, I got that feeling in my stomach of, oh, I don't wanna do Mesa. I don't wanna do Mesa Arch. If you don't know what Mesa Arch is, I, I'm gonna, I'll Google it and, uh, yeah, it's basically this famous arch in Arches National Park, probably the most famous arch. and. It's this beautiful arch, and when the sun rises in the morning, it hits the canyon wall in front of the arch or behind the arch, and then the reflected light illuminates the underside of the arch, and you get this intense glow. Um, some photographers intensify it more than they need to, but generally speaking, it is quite a sight. And the reason that I was filled with dread at going to this arch is because I knew, I knew what we were in for, I knew what was going to happen and I was, I was right. Now, um, the thing with this arch is it's so famous and so popular, I'd never been to it. So I said, look, if we're going to go to this arch, we need to leave at four in the morning because we have to be the first there. If we and if our group isn't the first there, we are not shooting this arch. So we left at four in the morning and we arrived at the arch and I was shocked, I was surprised at how small the arch is. The arch is about as big as this room. It's, it, it's really small and the images that you see of Mesa Arch, they're all shot with like super wide lenses, like 16 mil and even wider. And that gives the impression of this ginormous arch. But the truth is, when you're there with your tripod in front of the arch, you can just about lean out and touch the arch. So it's really small and you're really close to it when you're shooting, which means you can only comfortably get about five tripods in. Um, and I, I would say that those five photographers are gonna be happy and more or less get the shot that they want. Anything on top of those five photographers, you know, on the outside or at the back, they are not gonna get the shot that they want because they'll be too far over to either side or they'll have someone's head in their image. We arrived at about, I don't know, I can't remember now, 4.30, 5 a.m., a solid two and a half hours before sunrise. And there was already four tripods there. And I was like, Jesus, this is, all right, well, this isn't too bad. And there was a group of us, and I said to the group, I said, look, there's probably space for a couple of guys if you wanna get this shot, but please, 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 don't only consider that one composition for this 
location because there is so much on offer here. We are in a beautiful part of the world. Don't be distracted by the arch. Anyway, uh, a couple of people set up at the arch and that's fine. A couple of people started to wander off and explore, which is great. And as time grew on, as the blue hour came into fruition and the sun started to rise, more and more and more people turned up by the dozen, hundreds of them coming down, all photographers. And I was stood there in amazement, amazement. And I was watching people gather around the arch. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, I will always encourage people to get the iconic shot that they want, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and I would wholly encourage people to go and just enjoy the sunrise at the arch and not stress about getting a photograph. But this crowd, this crowd of people developed around the arch and, and there were photographers, I'm pretty sure they were all photographers, there was tripods, handheld cameras and it became like a rugby scrum, everyone was scrumming around this arch and it looked so uncomfortable and I knew for a fact that surely only the front five or six or seven or eight photographers are going to get the shot, three of which probably won't be happy with it. And, and the people at the front were made to feel so uncomfortable and it was awful to watch. It was a terrible experience that started to unfold. And here's the bit, here's the bit that I, that really I didn't quite understand and that, that kind of made me think what are you guys doing and I don't mean this in any kind of sort of arrogant way or you know I'm better than them or I'm too good to take the photograph absolutely not I tell you what if I got a, a good position in the arch I would 100% get the shot but yeah what I was saying so what really blew my mind was nobody read the situation for that arch for Mesa arch to work as a photograph you need direct sunlight. You need blue skies and the sunlight needs to hit the canyon wall, bounce up, get the reflection. Um, and it was gray skies, thick black clouds. You know, on the horizon to the east where the sun was rising was big storm clouds, full of mood, full of drama, full of atmosphere, full of everything you could want as a landscape photographer. Yet these people were so adamant on getting the art shot. And it was almost as if they didn't realize that, okay, we're not gonna get the shot because the light's not gonna happen. Yes, you can get a shot of the arch, but it's just under gray skies. It's a bit lackluster. And because it's an icon, you're gonna see so many better versions of that kind of flat gray version that you have. Um, so I, I massively encouraged my group to forget the arch, it's not going to happen, there's no light anyway, and look at the crowds, it's crazy. Let's see what else we can find, you know, let's break out the long lenses, let's go and explore. That's where the real joy in landscape photography lies, is the exploration and the finding something that's unique to you. Um, and we did, we had a wander and I went off with a few guys from the group and people started to find these great little compositions. And I, I, I shot one myself, I was with another gentleman and we, we sort of lined up our composition. I took this image. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not the world's best image, but it's a nice image and I'm, I'm happy with it because, because it's a little bit different to the, the usual arch. And it was just 20, 30 meters away, you know, to the right of the arch. And you, there, was, there was that composition, there was more composition. The light wasn't great, which, kind of hampered things a bit, but that sky was wonderful. And if you're shooting the arch, then the arch is actually gonna block the sky. I was just, I just don't, I don't know if people, what people didn't, if they didn't get it, if they didn't know that the arch wasn't going to glow or if, if they, there's also the stubborn side of things where if you've waited in position for so long, you know, you're gonna chance it and hope that the sun breaks through the clouds. Um, I don't know. Um, but for me, it was uh, it was an experience, and just to see the the, the people hoping for that one shot, um, and people crowding and almost fighting. I remember one guy got really irate. Uh, some some rude man was shouting at people, "Tell him turn off your head torches." He was saying, but he wasn't asking nicely. He was controlling the entire group of people. Going, head torches off. Um, which was strange because no one was doing night sky photography. It was still a bit dark and it would have been dangerous to walk without a head torch. 
So I don't know what this guy was playing at, but the general feeling in that scrum was was not friendly. You know, it felt like a bit hostile. Everyone was jostling for the position and all for nothing because there was no light. And I don't think people got this. And I think people were there should have explored further around the arch. Um, and that was that was my experience at Mesa Arch. Um, it was it was crazy. Crazy, crazy, and if you if you want to shoot Mesa Arch, I, it's a beautiful shot, and I encourage you to do it. My advice, having been once, so <laughs> take it or leave it, is get there, like shoot night sky photography, and stay out, stay up. You need to be there at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. to bag the best spot, and just make sure it's a blue sky day, and you will get a fantastic photograph. Uh, make sure your tripod's locked down because people will be weaving in and out, legs will be crossed, people will be coming over your shoulder with the camera. Ah, but be prepared for that. And then once you've got the shot, go off and explore because there's loads to shoot around Laser Arch. It's, it's beautiful. Um, another experience that I want to talk about, a much better one, in Canyonlands National Park. We, me and a small group, went out to Green River Overlook, I think it's called. And uh, I remember it was dark when we arrived so we didn't really know what was going to happen and what the light was going to do and as the ambient light started to increase the um we could we, we could see that it was going to be good you know it had potential we had that beautiful combination of storm clouds full of rain and full of weather and drama but to the east where the sun was rising there was a break on the horizon and it was a small break it was a thin break, but it was a break nonetheless. And what that meant was that that break was going to allow the sunlight to come through the clouds, illuminate the subject that we were shooting, which is all of the canyon and the canyon walls and everything. Um, and it should make for a fantastic photograph with the dark stormy sky in the background. Now, I, in my experience, I was able to read the situation and read the weather. So I encourage the group to frame one composition. You know, use all of this ambient light, use the time that you have to walk around, find your subject, find your composition, and then just wait, just stick with it, because that light is going to hit. And when it hits, it will hit for no more than two or three minutes. And what you don't want to happen is for you to be off somewhere shooting something else because you had a bit of time, and then the light comes and you're running back and you don't really know what you're gonna shoot when you shoot this. And you end up with this kind of half-baked composition uh, with amazing light. Um, so I just encourage everybody to try pod up, you know, get set and be patient. And then the worst thing happened the sun started to come through the break in the sky and it illuminated the sky behind us and it was this glorious pink, red, fiery sky. It was insane, it was beautiful. And I was like, it was kind of like, a, I don't know, a scene from Braveheart or from 300 or something where I was shouting at the photographers, just hold your nerve, hold your nerve. Do not go and try and shoot it because behind us there was no real compositions. Yeah, that there was potential, but it would, in my opinion, it would have taken a while to find something nice. You had the car park in the way and stuff, and you know it was one of those frustrating moments where the beautiful light was happening behind us and there was not much there. I grabbed the shot on my phone, um, and you can see the sky was just beautiful. I had to tell people to hold their nerve. Just, just wait, that light, that is a good sign. That's coming up through the clouds and soon it will be hitting our subject in front. And lo and behold, it did. It lit up all of the canyon walls in the distant background and it brought the image to life. Without that light, the image would be very flat. But with the light, the image was fantastic. You have that dramatic moody sky, the burning red light on the canyons in the background and this really interesting kind of feature this grandeur of this huge canyon with the green river and uh, there was that was the best shoot of the week because it was <laughs> I felt I was so nervous because I'm there as a leader as an instructor and I'm telling everybody to ignore the beautiful light don't shoot it um, by all means spin your camera around and get a shot but do not move your tripod think about where your focus is set think about your composition because in a minute's time you're going to want to have that back um, and I was really worried that actually I was telling people not to shoot this amazing light and then maybe it, it wouldn't happen the way I thought it was going to in front of us. But it did, it did. 
So it's kind of a moment of like, oh my God, am I doing the right thing? And then, oh yeah, we did the right thing. And everyone was super happy and we got this fantastic shot. My favorite shot from the, uh, from the conference. Um, and yeah, I, I just think that was a couple of stories that I want to share with you because last week the video was a bit, you know, I didn't get anything and uh, I didn't want you to think that the whole week had been like that. So that's it, that's, that's this video. I just want to tell you a couple of stories. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, ooh, have you seen this? Canon 5D, not a 5D, <laughs> it may as well be a 5D. Uh, Canon EOS R, uh, this has just been sent to me, it's just a loan, um, it's not mine, I don't own it. I haven't even used it yet, as, uh, I don't, I've, not, I've not put a battery in it, but um, I will be having a play over the next few weeks and giving my opinions and my thoughts the best way I know how, which is to actually go out and test it in the extremes and uh, use it. Um, but yeah, so, I don't know, something for the future, if you're interested. And, oopsie daisy. Next week, next video, what do we do next week? Um, ah, yeah, so the next video is pretty cool. Back in the UK, shooting autumn. A uh, few nice images, uh, some lovely mist and some lovely uh, late evening light um, and some nice subjects. So yeah, please do tune in next week. And if you uh, enjoyed this video, uh, please do subscribe or like it or comment your thoughts on busy, iconic locations, whatever you want, I mean, anyway, I don't care. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. I've got to entertain the family this evening. Um, In-laws are coming around, Halloween party, so it should be fun. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bye for now.